Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to paint a rose with you. I'm going to be using my 3 quarter inch fusion flat brush and I will also be using the number 10 fusion flat. I also have out a cap of extender and I have my water. On my palette I am going to be using the following colors. I've got my Hansa Yellow, my Yellow Oxide, Naphthol Red Light, Burnt Sienna, Pine Green, Thalo Blue, Red Violet, Quinacridone Violet, and White. And I have my value scale set out beside me to help me keep track of any values that I'm looking for. So let's get started. I have a 1 8 inch hard board here that I am coated with a gray sort of background. It's about a value 7. So for my background I'm going to start with a little bit of blue. I'm mixing the thalo blue and white. The thalo blue is a very strong color so you don't need very much of it in order to make the color. I'm going to add a little bit of violet to it just to give it a cooler tone. And I'm adding water to it so that it dries faster because I want it to dry before I put the rose on it. So you'll see here that I'm going to be putting it on in a cross, which is a pattern that's very appealing to the eye. It, um, it is one that the Dutch floral painters used often, and uh, so it's, it's a very appealing pattern. I'm adding a little extra blue to change the tone, um, just to add more interest and movement to the background. And here I'm dipping into a little bit of water just to soften out my background. I'm also going to go in and add a little more violet just to give it a little shot of power across it. I kind of like the, the looks of that. So now I'm going to put the three quarter inch brush away and we're going to start our rows with the number 10 flat. I'll put a link in the description to where you can pick up these brushes and paints. So I start out my rows by making a nice gray uh, by mixing some of my other colors. So to my blue there I'm adding some burnt sienna, red, yellow, and a little more blue and then some white. I like to mix my grays instead of using black and white because it gives a more more life to the color. That's a pretty gray that I've got there. So I'm going to base my roses in using that. I dipped into a little bit of extender just to keep that wet. So I'm going to base in my roses and set them where I want them to be. So my first one, which is going to be my largest rose or my queen, is going to be pointing up this direction to the right. And I'm going to put a second smaller rose down below it and have them interact with each other. So I also have my paper towel out so that I can pinch wipe my brush in between areas that I work on. So next I'm going to set the gaze of my rose using a mixture of red violet and quinacridone violet. Mix those two together and I'm going to have this rose pointing up and to the right so I go in and make a nice deep center and then I lift the pressure off my brush as I go out towards the edge of my rose. And I'll use the same color for my bowl shadow. Now I'm going to take the same color and gray it down a little bit using some of that gray that I had made before and do the same thing on the smaller rows because I want it to sit behind the big rows so I don't want it to be as bright and vibrant. So I'm going to clean out my brush for this one because I don't want to have any of that violet in with my yellows when I start adding them. I'm painting a yellow rose for you today. It's one of my favorite colors of roses. 
So I've taken some yellow oxide into my gray there and um, I'm going to use that along with a little bit of white to set my front petal on the rose. I will add more vibrancy to it later. So I'm just going to strike a petal right across the front of the rose. And then I'll bring it down towards my bowl shadow. So I'm going to add a little bit of a little bit more white to that and I'm going to add some Hansa to really brighten it up. Hansa is a much more intense color. So I'm going to add that in and I'm also going to start bringing in a reaching petal from the outside. Then I use my finger to push it in and incorporate it into the rose. I'm going to keep on doing that um, to incorporate more petals and use very light pressure and a lot of paint. I'm adding some small petals around the back of the rose but I'm keeping them uh, light so that they don't come forward visually. I want them to recede, otherwise the rose will look flat. I'm going to continue adding petals around the outside of my rose and incorporating them in with my finger. Now I'm going to take a splash of Hansa and put it onto the warm side of my rose. This will really help uh, with making that side look more sunstruck. Now that I've brightened up the side of my rose, I'm going to take some more Hansa and white and I'm going to really strike it on that front petal to bring it out and then draw down towards the bowl again. You want to keep a lot of that really nice movement in there. Now I'm going to use some violet and cool that down so that I can go around to the shadow side of the rose. I'm also not going to define my edges as much over here because I'd like them to get lost into the background. And whatever you do, always try and maintain that bowl shadow because that's what's going to give you the shape of your rose. So I'm taking a bit of Hansa now on my brush and then I'm going to dip the corner of my brush into my white. This is called petal edging and I'm going to use that to draw the edge of another petal and then once I've drawn the edge of the petal I'll then stroke it in and out into the bowl and then I'll stroke out from the bowl with my finger to put that shadow back on it. And that gives you a really nicely defined found edge on the petals on the light side of my rose. You want to keep your largest petals towards the outside and they get smaller as you go in towards the center of your rose. That's how roses actually are in nature. As you get around to the cool side, you'll want to use a little bit more violet again into your yellow because you want to, this is your shadow side of the rose and you want it to stay cooler. So you can stroke those petals on, the petals above the bowl and the petals below the bowl. I also like to uh, take some of my color and just add a, a little bit more tones to the back and that's going to disappear into the background. And I'll take some of that color and I'll splash it around the painting, just giving the impression that there might be more roses behind there when once I put on my leaves and everything. I use a lot of paint so you'll see that the paint on my brush is very thick and that allows me to move the paint around with my fingers better and incorporate my my petals in. Um, I also like to vary my tones um, so that the petals don't all look the same. You want your petals to to stand apart from each other otherwise your rose gets flat looking. And I, I don't put the white on all of my petals just because I want to keep some interest to it. And if you ever feel like you're losing your bowl shadow, you can always just restate it like I just did here. So now you just continue around your rows, adding petals and restating any that get lost while you're working.
each person will petal their roses a little bit differently. You just pick where you want your petal, put it in and bring the shadow up onto it. Here I'm restating my front petal again. I'll restate that petal a lot of times because that's the most important one where the sun is hitting it. And if you ever feel like you're losing your bowl again, you can put more shadow on it as needed. Here I'm putting quite a bit more shadow on because I felt like I had lost it quite a bit. That shadow is what's going to separate your reaching petals from your bowl petals. Also one other tip as you're going is to not stroke too many times with your brush or you'll destroy all the movement that you've created on your petals. Here I'm adding some petals to my center of my rose and then I'm going back into the red violet to really deepen that center of the rose and bring those petals out. And you'll notice those are very small petals that I'm drawing. It's just the impression of tiny petals in there. Now I'm going to take the same colors but I'm going to mute them down with some of that gray and I'm basically going to do the same thing on the second rose. I'm going to use the gray so that it sits back further um, from the top rose which is my queen because I don't want it to compete with the queen. Here I'm going over top of some of the petals on my queen but I'll fix that after. If you try to avoid doing that it'll look like you avoided it but you can always go back in with, with paint and actually go over the top again. You don't need as much detail on this back rose either because as long as your queen is has lots of detail, your smaller rose in the back will look like it has, um, it'll look like a rose. You just need the impression there. And here I'm restating the bowl on that one as well because it kind of got lost. Once you're done with your back rows, then you can go back and um, restate any petals on your queen that you want and uh, brighten them up if you want to. So I wanted to brighten my petals up with a little more Hansa because I had used quite a bit of yellow oxide. And the Hansa is a much brighter yellow. It's a higher value and it's more intense than the yellow oxide. I'm also taking this opportunity to build a lot more texture on my queen rose and you want the texture to be on the front of the rose and on your petals that are at the front because that will cause them to come forward in the composition. If you put texture on the back of the rose you'll lose your roundness because the back of the rose will pop forward. So I'm just continuing to add more light and more texture to that front petal on my rose. At this point I'm also going to make a decision about my back petals and how much light I want on them. So I decided I was going to bring them forward a little bit because um, they were quite dark yet and I wanted to increase the size of my rose a little bit. Now I'm going to let that rose tack up a little bit and I'm going to go into my green and a little bit of violet to cool it off. I want a nice um, dark green for this and I'm going to use that around my rose to do some negative painting.
which will define the petals a little bit better and will also create the shadows so it'll make the rose itself look lighter by putting shadows beside it. I'm keeping my petal or my leaves and everything quite loose and impressionistic because I don't want to have really well-defined leaves at this point. You want to change up your greens so that you have different tones of green to make them more interesting. Here I'm using green and Hansa and a little bit of white. And here I'm going to start putting in some more defined leaves. So you can see I'm using two or three strokes to define the leaf and then I'm just taking a little bit of the color off to add some interest to it. These are the leaves that are on my light side so I'm making them a little lighter in color. And here I'm using a little negative painting with the leaves on the back of the rose. So I put some of that light color down in the bottom as well because you do have, if you look at, at rose bushes in, the, in real life, you have light that comes through the branches and hits different areas. Also the addition of different tones of green will just add interest to your painting. Here I'm making an even lighter green that I'm going to then use to put some more leaves in and just give it more interest. And here I'm also making a lot of just little movements of color so that it adds interest to the painting and just gives the impression that there's other things going on in the background. I do dip into extender sometimes when I'm making my leaves because it makes the paint slide nicer. I use the extender from Janssen Art that goes with the Heritage paints. Here I'm adding a little bit more green and I'm adding some blue to the green to make another darker color. And a little bit more violet which cools it off. And I'm going to restate some of my shadows, deeper shadows in the center because that really allows that, that top rose, my queen rose, to pop off of the canvas. Lots of brush movements to give the impression of, of things happening in your painting. Now here I've gone into some green and burnt sienna and I'm using that to give some stem lines and I just add them in around the painting so that it looks like there's a bush going on behind there. Once I'm done with my leaves, I'm going to actually go back in at the end to make sure that my lights are all nice and bright. One thing you'll find with acrylics is that they do tend to dry about one value darker than how they look when they're wet. So once they've dried a little bit, you can see where you want to brighten things up. And again, I'm brightening up that front petal on my rose because for me that's where exactly where the light is hitting and I want to make sure that that part really stands out. You can let the yellow mix in a little bit with the greens on your outer petals. That actually gives a nice transparent look to those petals. And here I'm restating the petal that goes over top of the back rows because I want to make sure that my queen rose sits on top of it. I'm also going to go back in and try and lose the edge of 
the shadow side of my rose again because it kind of got too well defined by my leaves and I want that to be kind of the lost edge where all my found edges are on the other side. And if you take out too much of it, you can always go back in and add some more petals. If you find that your transition from the light to dark looks too bright to you, or too strong to you, you can always make up a half tone that's halfway between the light and the dark and put that in there to soften that edge. And then here I'm going to come back and make sure that that front petal sits on top of it again. And here I've decided to add another petal back to the shadow side because I felt like I took off too much. And I think we're going to call that done. So we'll put our name on it and uh, that's your rose. So make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe down at the bottom. We will be uploading new content weekly and we'll have more tutorials and some tips and tricks and lots of interesting videos for you to watch. Thank you.